Hello. I want to introduce you about a very nice book that I edited. La Opera de México. The Opera from Mexico or in Mexico. This book gathers several articles created by, by important scholars on the topic and emerging scholars who were working very hard during the seminars on Mexican opera held at the Fausto de Andres y Aguirre College of Music in the city of Pue Ocholula, in Puebla, Mexico. This, uh, this series of seminars, distributed in three parts, uh, were coordinated by Dr. Enid Negrete. The contributions that we aim in the, the create in the creation of these different seminars was to give a good panorama of the, of the opera in Mexico, how it evolved, main characters, main people who were participating, titles, orchestras, singers, etc. that participate and create what now we can label uh, as the opera in Mexico. We are happy that we were working close, we, we are uh, scholars, we were working very close with several students uh, that we were supervising and appreciating very well their work, who wrote important papers on the history of opera in Mexico, and some selected ones are published in this book. The reader will find a book in three sections. That, that's how we, we divide this one. The first one contains the pre-Hispanic and the Viceregal time. And for the pre-Hispanic, the reader will explore how music and theatrical uh, pre-Hispanic activities like the Quicatl uh, expand and contribute into the full audiovisual imaginary. That audiovisual imaginary that the first Europeans saw when they came to, to, this, uh, to this land which eventually contribute in the development of all the visual imaginary during the colonial and then during the independent Mexico. We can see traits of those in the architecture, in the painting, in the music, and in any other artistic and cultural craft from this place. The Vestrinal time was important, and we see how the metropolis, which Mexico City was, which was connected uh, who was having very good connections to the Philippines, to Guatemala, to the whole Central and Southern America and North America, and of course to, to the Spanish capital in Madrid, was able to exchange knowledge, music, and visual elements towards all the places. The fact that they, in, the, in 1711, at, at the theater of the court in the the Vestrigal Palace. It, the, the, there was a stage, one of the first operas here in this country, the second one basically, by Manuel de Sumaya, which was La Partenope. La Partenope is a key element. It is an Italian libretto, which was translated into Spanish. The topic is completely from Naples. It was one of the most popular operatic uh, topics during the end 17th century and during the first half of 18th century. Even Handel wrote an, an opera on this topic. Therefore, Mexico since that time declared itself its links towards the international operatic arena. And we will see that through the entire 18th century, how the different connections will be. The reader will find excellent and fascinating examples which I hope they will really, really enjoy. Uh, the second part explores already how, how Mexico turned to be independent during the 19th century. The independence of Mexico took place in 1821 after a long battle uh, with Sp towards the Spanish uh, army. And the first celebration, of course, was an opera. They composed Mexico Libre, Free Mexico, as the first operatic work of this independent nation. That is crucial to understand the cultural policy towards 19th century. Several opera houses pop up during the entire country. And several companies, inter Italian companies, American companies, came to Mexico as a very important place 
to distribute Oprah and to show the latest hits. Therefore, what was staging and was famous in Milan, London, Paris, New York, was also arriving here. The singers who were there also came here. And also the Mexican composers enriched their work with all that knowledge, with all that influence, to develop their own works, to make the use of some local topics into the operatic work and already made by Mexican composers. They have made themselves their voice. Singers explore their way into the international arena. The third section explores the 20th and 21st century. The nationalisms in music evolve and they were very rich. And also the, the reader will see how opera turned to be not just an entertainment, not just a way to understand some elements of the traditions, but also to see the problematic things of, of the country, the ideology, the things to be said and that no one wanted to say, but the opera is a place to say it. We see in, in, the, the, last, in the last decades how works uh, by Gabriel Ortiz, for example, they explore this area. The reader will appreciate and see really how this complex panorama of opera is. Scholars, uh, stage directors, art historians, or just the audience who want to know more about this genre will be benefit. We will be happy to read this work. Thank you very much. Thank you.